Hey everybody, recently there's been some confusion about the TCO2 and PCO2 and what the difference is and which value you should be using to interpret the blood gas. So let's get this confusing terminology cleared up. The blood gas report and some chemistry panels will often report a value called the TCO2 in addition to the PCO2 and the bicarbonate. T stands for total, and this can be very confusing when you first start evaluating blood gases. What we're really concerned with when we interpret a blood gas are the PCO2 and the bicarbonate. Let's look at the difference between those two values. In order to understand the TCO2, we have to look at the carbonic anhydrase equation. Carbon dioxide can combine with water to form carbonic acid, and carbonic acid can give up two hydrogens and an oxygen molecule, in other words, it gives up a water molecule, to form CO2. Similarly, carbonic acid can give up just one hydrogen ion to form the electrolyte called bicarbonate. All of these changes are occurring along a continuum according to the laws of chemistry and physics. And because they are, part, they are all part of the carbonic anhydrase system, then we can say that a bicarbonate and a carbonic acid are just altered forms of carbon dioxide. So over on the left side of the equation, we see the dissolved carbon dioxide. In the middle of the equation, we see the carbonic acid. And on the right, we see the bicarbonate. The sum of these three components in millimoles per liter is the total CO2 that exists in that blood sample. So T stands for total, the TCO2, is the sum of bicarbonate, carbonic acid, and dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood sample. P stands for partial pressure. It basically means how much of a molecule is dissolved in gas form in a liquid. Gases can dissolve in liquids just like sugar dissolves in a drink. Think about the carbonation of soda or beer. This carbonation is dissolved CO2. The PCO2 is the partial pressure of CO2 in the blood. In other words, how much CO2 is dissolved in the blood and available for gas exchange when the blood goes to the lungs. When you pop the top on a cold, tasty beverage, the excess CO2 escapes. When we breathe out, we breathe off excess CO2. That is the PCO2, the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in the blood as a gas and can be breathed out when it gets to the lungs. That's the part of this total CO2 that represents the respiratory component of the blood gas. So, for acid-base analysis, we are interested in the ratio of the left side of the equation to the right side of the equation. We don't really care so much about the middle. When we talk about a patient's acid-base status, we are interested in the ratio of dissolved carbon dioxide to the bicarbonate. In other words, we want to compare the respiratory component to the metabolic component, which means we want to compare the PCO2 to the HCO3. So, bottom line, TCO2 is the sum of all of the components, including the intermediates we don't really worry about with our acid-base analysis. It's reported on a lot of blood gas results and some serum chemistry reports, but we don't really consider this value in our acid-base analysis. Instead, we're concerned with the gas form of carbon dioxide that's regulated by the lungs, which is the PCO2, and the electrolyte form of carbon dioxide that's regulated by the kidneys, which is the bicarbonate, also called HCO3. So, the value that's reported as PCO2 and the value that's reported as HCO3 are the numbers that we will use in our acid-base analysis. If you find yourself getting confused, an easy way to remember which CO2 measurement to use is that the lungs can only breathe off the gas part, in other words, a partial amount of the total CO2. P stands for partial, so when we evaluate the respiratory component, we want to look at the PCO2. I hope this clears up any confusion. Please let me know if this doesn't make any sense. Enjoy your tasty beverage, and until next time, keep the rubber on the road and the blood inside.